Hello and welcome to this video on working with macros inside of Microsoft Word. During this exercise here, we're going to take a look at how you can automate the creation of a simple table inside of Microsoft Word through a macro. Now I've got an example file open in front of me and this is what I'm going to use to demonstrate creating this macro. If you would like, you can hop down to the description of this video and download the ex example file from the Office Noob blog. You can download it, you can follow along with me. And while you're down there, if you enjoy this video, you'll learn something new, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Let me know that you've enjoyed it and that you've learned something new. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can get alerts about new videos that I upload to this channel regularly. And feel free to leave a comment and let us know what you've learned and how you could potentially apply this to your working scenario. Now, once you get the file downloaded, you can open it up. The file that you're going to look for is called 29 working word macros hyphen zero one and this is just a standard microsoft excel document a dot docx right there now i've got it open in front of you it's a simple little document it's got a few headers working with word macros Let's see i've got stuff in there for tables table one table two and so on table three and then just a bunch of paragraphs of text now what we're going to take a look at here is how we can create a table like this. Now, if you've worked inside of Microsoft Word and you've built tables, you know that it takes a few steps in order to get something that looks like this right here, even at its bare bones without any data in it. I just want to create a table that's got four columns and a handful of rows for me to input data. Now, if you're in a larger document and you plan on inserting multiple tables into that document, you're going to have to recreate that table every time. So you'd have to go up to your insert tab, go to table, define what the table looks like, how many columns, how many rows. You would then have to format it and so on. So you're going to go through four, five, six, seven, eight steps in order to eventually get the table that you want. Well, what I want to do is I want to take those four, five, six, seven, eight steps and I want to turn it into one step, one button press and my table is done. It's built, it's got the number of columns I want, it's got a handful of rows waiting for me to input the data, and it's already formatted. So in steps, a macro to automate this experience. Take a look. So inside of the example file, I've got table one there with already a sample table there. We're gonna create something that looks something like this. It's gonna have four columns, handful of rows, it's gonna be formatted, and we'll already place the headings in there. ID, project name, start, and status. Okay, but I want to create one of these throughout the document. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to find the section called table two, and I'm going to make sure my cursor is flashing right below that header. Very important here, when you create macros inside of Microsoft Word, Word does not record your, your mouse strokes as far as clicking in the document itself. So if I click somewhere as I'm creating a macro, recording a macro, it won't capture that. If I highlight something with my mouse, it won't capture that. So once again, very important that we just place our cursor where we wanna create the table. Once that's done, I'm then gonna go up to my developer tab, top of the screen. I'm gonna go over to the left-hand side where I've got code, and I'm gonna to go to record macro. Now, just a really quick tip right here. If you do not have the developer tab open, it's not one that's by default. You can right click on a tab, such as references. You can go to customize ribbon. And from here on the left or on the right hand side, you'll look for developer and make sure that that has a check mark next to it. We're good. I'll hit okay. Once again, developer tab, and I'm gonna go to record macro. So I'll give that a click. Now, if you've utilized macros inside of something like Microsoft Excel, you're going to see some similarities here. But Word does have its own nuances, its own little differences that make it a little more unique standing away from Microsoft Excel. The first thing we got here is to give the macro a name. So here, I'm just going to call it Simple Table. 
And we want to stay away from spaces in your macro names. This is important to the VBA procedures or code that's generated in the background. No spaces in your macro names. Now I'm going to skip over the assign to for just a moment. Then I'm going to move down to the store macro n. I'm going to change that from all documents, normal dot dot. I'm going to change that from all to our specific document. So this macro for our example right here is only going to be available inside of this document that we're currently working in. I'm going to store the macro in 29 working word macros hyphen zero one. Now I'm doing it for this example here and just for the example. But if you want this macro to be able to work in any document that you open on your computer, then you would want to store that inside of the normal dot dot document. All right, so I'm going to keep it here, 29 working word macros. And then the next thing we get to do here is assign how we want to run the macro, whether that's through a button that we generate or through a keyboard shortcut. Once again, for our example right here, I'm going to go to keyboard. And in this step, I get to assign a keyboard shortcut to run our macro. So I'm going to click down here where it says press new shortcut key. I'm going to click into there, and for our example, I'm going to use Control Shift T, the letter T, like table. Now, very important as far as Microsoft Word is concerned, this shortcut key is what we're now going to use to run our macro, but it may already have an associated command. In this case, Control Shift T does the unhang command. Now it's one that I don't utilize as far as a shortcut key is concerned, so I'm not too concerned at this point. We wouldn't want to use something like Control S, right? If I utilize Control S here, let's just take a look. Control, oop, Control S, we can see that that is currently assigned to file save. So I wouldn't want to do that because we can potentially override the default shortcut keys assignment. So once again, I'll say Control Shift T. Let's make sure that that one is gone. Control Shift T. Now, once again, it's only going to be stored. I'm going to change this save changes in to the 29 working word macros file. This way we make sure that it's being stored and only available and only overriding the shortcut key inside of this document right here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit assign. We've now assigned that to our macro, and I'll close this window. Now, as soon as I click close here, we are now recording. You can see that my cursor has got a little arrow with the, the little cassette tape sitting there, letting me know that I'm currently recording a macro. Great. Remember, my cursor is currently flashing there, and I'm going to leave it there. I'm now going to go up to my Home tab. I'm going to go, ooh, excuse me. I'm going to go to my Insert tab, and I'm going to go to Table. And I'm going to build, again, just a simple table. Four little columns wide and just a handful of, of rows. I'm going to click to create that table. Now, keep in mind, we're recording right now. So Word is busy writing in the background everything that we're doing. Well, they went to the Insert tab. They clicked on Insert Table. They picked this many columns, this many rows, and it boop, got a table there. Now, I'm still clicked inside that table. So now I'm going to go to my table design tab. I'm going to go into table styles and I'm going to pick a style to apply some formatting. Let's say I go with this orange one right here and you can pick whatever catches your eye. And I'll grab that one. And once again, it's formatted it and Word has now written that down, said, oh, while I was recording, you changed the theme or the style of that table. So now my cursor sitting there flashing inside of the first cell of that table, the first header. So I'm just going to leave it there and I'm going to bring in uh, some text. I'm going to say the label for this header is going to be ID. I'll hit my tab key to move over to the next cell. I'm going to call this one project tab over again. We'll say a start date tab and status. And I'm good right there. Now I move from cell to cell within this table, not with my mouse, because the macro recorder would not recognize that, but I use my tab key, keys on my keyboard to navigate this table right here. That's important 
because as the macro recorder is generating all the code in the background that will eventually rerun and rebuild this table again for us, it's capturing the keyboard shortcuts, not the mouse. So now I'm gonna call this done. I think it looks good. So I'm now gonna go back to my developer tab and I'm gonna hit the stop recording button. Boop. Done. All right, so we've generated the table, but we recorded ourselves building that table. So now the next time, as I'm working through this document, I decide, oh, I need another one of those tables. I don't have to go back and copy and paste or rebuild that table from scratch, but I can drop down in my document somewhere, such as right below the table three header, and I can now run my shortcut key. Control, Shift, T, and I've got my table. Already formatted, already got the headers in there. Done. So quick we're able to automate our experience and simple little tasks like this utilizing Microsoft Word macros. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something new. Think about where you could apply something like this in your own working experience. Where would you like to automate tasks that'll save you time, resources, and potentially money as you work inside of Microsoft Word? So I hope you enjoyed this video. You learned something new. If you have, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can be alerted to new videos that I upload to this channel. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.